Good evening. I think we'll go ahead and get started if you can find a, a chair. First, I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out this evening to t participate in the Comprehensive Plan Community Meeting. This is our second public meeting. Um, my name is uh, Jim Hinderocker, and I'm a planner with the City of Fargo. And one of the things I want to do is give a special thanks to our uh, technical committee. Uh, there's a bunch of city staff and other folks that are on that technical committee, as well as our steering committee. I see we've got a quite a number of those here. Actually, if we can get our technical committee and steering committee to raise their hands, I want to thank you all for your, your hard work. I, I got to say, it's been really exciting to be a part of this process. We, we started this uh, in, in late April when we kicked it off, and we had our first public meeting in June, and we've had a uh, social media website up called Mind Mixer, and I'm guessing there's an awful lot of people that have been uh, posting comments and, and uh, uh, issues on that particular website, so it's exciting to see all the participation. Uh, really excited to see as many people as we have here tonight, a lot of young folks, so thank you very much for, for coming out tonight. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with an introduction and going over things. We've got a lot of things to cover tonight, and so I want to introduce uh, Stephen Hardy with uh, BNIM uh, and uh, turn it over to him. Thank you, Jim. It's good to be here. Good to see a lot of familiar faces. I think this is the most glorious day I've been in Fargo, uh, so the, I appreciate that. Uh, we especially appreciate you being inside with us on a day like this. Uh, I know that many of you have looked inside your little manila envelopes and seen that there are beans. If you've counted, there are 15. The normal rule is you get 10, but we figured if you come out on a night like tonight, you deserve an extra five. So that's your little uh, congratulatory prize. Um, we are starting to make good progress in this comprehensive plan, and uh, we're about oh, getting near the two-thirds mark, which is really about the halfway point in the public face of the process. Um, the first couple of months were really about us getting a better understanding of what's happening in Fargo, looking at a lot of different data, and finishing that piece of work with the introductory public meeting that many of you attended where we were talking about what should the high-level vision for Fargo and this plan be. Uh, over the last couple of months, we've moved from that high-level visioning phase into thinking about what are our uh, strategic initiatives and the guiding principles for the work. And so we're slowly drilling down into more detail into what will be um, completed in this plan. And you'll see, I think you've got a fair amount of reading uh, at check-in. Uh, we're starting to write things down, and that's only going to be increasing. Uh, but we want to be vetting that stuff uh, with you, with a variety of stakeholders, as we move towards having a final comprehensive plan, which will be the city's uh, governing document for policy. So we're in September. After tonight, we're going to be moving into full-on plan production and really getting specific about what we're recommending. We're going to be asking you tonight to help us uh, refine that higher-level stuff and begin to prioritize where we're going. And I'll explain those exercises a little bit later tonight. By December, it's going to be about working with our steering committee to make sure that we're all moving in the same direction. And then we'll be back in January uh, in another town hall meeting to present the final plan and to make sure uh, that everything that you've told us has been recorded correctly and that you agree with the decisions that we've been led towards. After that, uh, it'll come to the, commission, to the planning commission and the commission for approval and, and then become official city policy. So um, we'll be presenting it to you and would certainly appreciate your participation then and I know uh, city officials would love to have you come back when they're deciding, uh, voting on the measure. Hopefully come February, late January, February. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer than that. So just as a summary about what we've already heard, uh, I think that we've been really pleased with the amount of participation, uh, particularly from younger folks. Uh, those of you really below 60. <laughs> uh, we've had an a extremely high turnout uh, uh, in that area, and we appreciate that. It's given the process a lot of life, and when you're thinking about a plan 
uh, whose ultimate implementation day is really 2030, it's nice to have a strong representation of people that will be uh, hopefully here in Fargo helping accomplish that vision. Jim mentioned the Mind Mixer site. I know a lot of you particip or have participated on that site. The last couple of weeks it's uh, gone into a quieter phase after tonight. It'll be ramping back up with many of the topics that we are talking about here, so we really do encourage you to log back on uh, if you haven't gone there in a while. <laughs> also, uh, just in case you're a tweeter, uh, the uh, Go2030 hashtag is up, and someone here is live tweeting, and if you'd like to participate there, we'll be sure to uh, check that. I just wanted to give you an update about where we are on the Mind Mixer site. Um, we've got almost 2,000 unique visitors to that website, so uh, we really do appreciate the 2,000 people who are helping to write the plan through that forum. Uh, that's almost 50,000 page views, and that group submitted 332 original ideas, uh, many of which found their way directly into what you'll be reviewing tonight. Uh, I should say that uh, this hasn't really happened <laughs> anywhere else before. Uh, the kind of crowdsource plan is a new thing, and uh, just in the last year, there are a couple of communities like Fargo who are piloting this work, and so your contributions on this site are actually really changing the entire planning profession. Um, when we started this work, Mind Mixer, I think, was in three communities, and they're in 40 now. So just this, uh, you've really helped prove how important this tool is. There's some... Uh, the team really enjoys reading the comments that are on that side. I just wanted to put a few up on the screen for you to look at. Um, there was a lot in there about how Fargo could be more creative, be beautiful, uh, could be more efficient, how important art is, uh, the need to provide permanent flood protection, and to make Fargo a walkable city. Many, many of those themes uh, came up again and again, both on that side and in the conversations we've had. In the vision category, uh, we've put up some of the vote tallies, and I should say the, the number of points generated helps us make decisions. It's not the final, uh, final vote. You're going to be participating in the next round of that tonight, um, but it helps the team narrow its focus. Uh, the arts and the importance of the arts really showed up in every category. Uh, honoring and uh, building a strong, diverse middle class was a theme. And uh, I'm just going to be calling out a few of these because there really are hundreds of good ideas. And, and a significant amount of feedback about better tying to Fargo's roots and the river. As far as flood mitigation goes, Fargo, life's a beach, uh, and that's about celebrating the river and simultaneously providing protection. And that was another common theme, that creating parks and uh, buildings as flood for protection was both about providing the city protection, but also thinking about the river and how you do that as an amenity, and you'll see some ways that that influenced the plan. On the housing and neighborhood question, uh, it was everything from how to deal with snow, snow and snow plows to uh, thinking about mixed-use development and walkable neighborhoods. In transportation, there was a good diversity of suggestions and ideas, but a lot in there about making Fargo an extremely bicycle-friendly community. On the economic development side, most of the comments we got were about making Fargo a stronger city and through doing that, uh, bringing about economic development. But there was also uh, specific references to uh, high-tech industry in Fargo, the uh, medical industry in Fargo, and uh, potential growth and development industry. In land use and urban design, we had a comments about improving the aesthetic appeal, uh, focusing on infill development, and the creation of a greenway trail network throughout the city. In this plan, more than many others, we've seen an emphasis on energy and er energy efficiency. And in that category, we had comments from everything, uh, including improving the Fargo's grid to thinking about energy efficiency and also renewable generation and how to best tell that story and even be showing Fargo off uh, to the country. In healthy food and lifestyles, um, this is about, many, in many, uh, many cases, making communities more walkable, putting amenities near where residents are living. It was also about providing access to healthy foods, whether that was through community gardens or farmers markets or a host of other ideas. 
In the natural resources environment category, uh, one of the ideas that I really liked that was a, an original idea for Fargo, I think, is this concept of nature playgrounds at schools. And I thought that was, uh, if, you, if you check that one out, it's about providing wild places for children uh, on school grounds where they can be exploring natural areas instead of just program spaces. More trees. I think the planning team is uh, continually impressed by the tree canopy that exists in some places in Fargo, and that really is uh, an amenity that's unique to the community. This one, the Boulevard Rain Gardens, ties a little bit back to how you're dealing with stormwater and trying to do that in a way that improves the, uh, the appearance and the functionality of the city. So we put all of those ideas from MindMixer, all of the comments from the first public meeting, and all of the notes that we've taken from the uh, dozens of stakeholder interviews into a website that some of you may have seen before. And it sizes the words relative to uh, the number of times they were mentioned. This is a good way of, for us of cataloging, uh, in a glimpse, the notes from what, we're, from what we're hearing. So just to draw out a couple of, my pointer's not really going to work, draw out a couple of items. Uh, more than anything, Fargo is a strong community, and we've heard that over and over. It's a place where people really care about each other, and we've seen that too. Uh, it's a place with a high quality of life, uh, with a strong economy that's uh, energetic. Uh, I think that energy term refers to both energy efficiency and also the energy of the people that are here. Um, that uh, the economy is also driven by development. That the arts and transportation and uh, the bike opportunities, the diversity of transportation opportunities are all critically important. And w one word that was kind of jumping out to a lot of people is the system word, which isn't necessarily always that big of a word in a cloud like this. And the team talked about that a little bit. And we've, we've kind of, after pulling that apart, we were thinking, well, transportation system, bike system, all of the systems, and, and realized that uh, I think what it points to is a fairly high um, understanding of how connected all these systems are and how important they are uh, to understand them in this planning effort. So we use that word cloud to help us write the vision statement for this work. And that is that in 2030, Fargo will be a vibrant and sustainable city with a high quality of life, a robust economy, and a welcoming community atmosphere. And that's the highest level piece of guidance that we have for the plan. And everything that we do, all the way down to specific implementation initiatives, should tie directly back to supporting that idea. Just to give you a little bit better sense of how that structure works, uh, generally speaking, when we move from the vision to the guiding principles, which you'll be helping us review tonight, to the big ideas and key initiatives, which are at the lower level, there's another level below that, which is the strategies. How do you get these things done? And that's where we'll be moving. So you have in front of you uh, the guiding principles. You'll be actually voting on the key initiatives later tonight, so it's something you'll probably want to be glancing through as we go. But they're organized in water and the environment, energy, health, transportation, economy, neighborhoods, infill, and new development, and arts and culture. And we have a guiding principle for each of those categories. So for water and the environment, Fargo will create permanent flood protection and ensure the quality and supply of this precious resource through water conservation. We will celebrate water by embracing the Red River of the North and the Cheyenne River and integrating sustainable rainwater management techniques into the fabric of the city. We will protect our natural resources and preserve the health and beauty of our environment. The key initiatives that you have laid out in front of you and that will be part of the, the bean counting exercise later tonight are for permanent flood protection, green stormwater infrastructure, watershed management, drinking water quality and supply, water conservation, waste reduction and recycling, parks and open space and habitat, tree canopy enhancement, reduced light pollution, and improved air quality. For energy, the guiding principle is that Fargo will aggressively seek innovative strategies to support national energy independence. The community will find energy savings through efficiency measures and invest in renewable source resources for the future. The key initiatives in energy are that the city will lead the way and, uh, through, for efficiency and reduced emissions, 
that the community will look at incentives, incentives for energy efficiency and renewable energy production, and that the, the uh, Fargo's electricity grid will be part of that, uh, of those key initiatives. In health, the guiding principle is that Fargo will encourage healthy choices and improve the health of residents by enhancing awareness, increasing year-round recreational opportunities, access to healthy foods, and access to quality health care. The key initiatives in that category are the creation of a citywide trail loop, the, uh, the encouragement of healthy food production and access to healthy foods, year-round recreational opportunities, regional, recre uh, regional recreation amenity, and access to quality health care. For transportation, the guiding principle is that Fargo will transform its transportation system to encourage walking, biking, and transit. The city will coordinate infrastructure investments and land use policy in a supportive and synergistic way. The key initiatives in transportation are, are centered around bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure, improved transit, transportation linkages, and vehicular access to downtown. In economy, the guiding principle is that Fargo will build on its agriculture and ma manufacturing heritage and will be known as a cutting edge creative economy. We will educate and retain the best workforce in the nation and foster an innovative entrepreneurial environment. The key initiatives are uh, to create amenities and beautification as an economic development tool, to incentivize specialized spaces, to improve workforce training, to encourage entrepreneurship, and to redevelop the West Acres commercial area. In neighborhoods infill and new development, the guiding principle is that Fargo will promote attractive and welcoming neighborhoods by providing diverse and affordable housing stock. Fargo will create neighborhoods where residents can age in place, children can walk to school, and essential services are only a short walk away. Fargo will promote infill development and increase density and vitality in strategic nodes. Those key initiatives are about promoting infill, providing high quali quality affordable housing, uh, investigating design standards, providing housing for new Americans and low-income residents, and uh, encouraging historic preservation. And the last guiding principle is for arts and culture. Fargo will increase the presence of public art in the city and access to cultural events and education opportunities. Fargo will flourish with a stronger arts and culture movement that increases the quality of life for all residents. The key initiatives are centered around public art, festivals and cultural events, public gathering spaces, and access to art classes and cultural programs. So in addition to the feedback that we've been uh, extracting from all of you, we've also been looking at some data points to give us a sense of where some of these things might be. Uh, and you're going to be helping us with this analysis, uh, analysis a little bit later tonight. As you know, there are some space constraints and decisions that are guided by uh, flood protection issues. There are parts of town uh, that are more industrial in character, more commercial, and more in institutional in character, places that where most of you live, and a few places where you're mixed. And this map uh, up on the screen right now, the size of the dot corresponds to the number of either jobs in red or homes in yellow, and the orange dots are uh, where the two overlap. So you can see, particularly near the downtown, there's a lot of overlap and a few other interesting uh, areas where people are living and working in the same area. So we, we use those, uh, the ideas and the key initiatives and uh, the data that we've been looking through to come up with what we're calling the big ideas. And those are laid out on the maps in front of you. Uh, there was a handout that we gave you with lines on it uh, that, that we drew uh, really to get your juices flowing uh, as a sense of what this final map might look like, but you're going to be helping us decide exactly where these things belong later this evening. These big ideas are meant to encapsulate many of those key initiatives and give the plan a, a theme, something that people can really hold on to as what will be accomplished. Uh, the first idea is about providing permanent flood protection. And uh, we've just, I think through every conversation we've had, that's been something that just has to be done. 
uh, and that's how, it, <laughs> that's how we're moving forward on it in this plan. Uh, there's not a lot of mapping that you're going to be asked to do around that tonight. There's a, a whole lot of uh, analysis and engineering that's gone behind those decisions. Another terrifically important one is energy efficiency and renewable generation. Uh, again, not geographically specific, so you won't be investigating where it goes tonight, but another one of the major themes of the plan. There are strategic density nodes, and that's a concept uh, that we're, we're trying out tonight that really tries to incorporate both infill development and new development. And so there are different types of nodes that we, we think uh, that the strategic density table should consider. One would be a downtown neighborhood, much like your downtown, uh, where uh, it truly is a lot of housing, a lot of uh, uh, jobs in the same area with hopefully an amenity-rich uh, area as well. Strategic density areas, these might be along a particular corridor or in a regional destination. Uh, the neighborhood center density area uh, is a smaller scale, maybe some, uh, maybe a neighborhood shop, maybe a small neighborhood restaurant, um, and then uh, a housing type that's more dense typically than single family homes, but might have single family homes mixed in with it, I should say. Sust we have another type that we're calling sustainable new growth areas, and there are um, parts of town that currently are undeveloped, some of which already have infrastructure in place, and uh, we think they make a lot of sense as um, pilot examples of how to be growing uh, in a planned and efficient way in Fargo. The next big idea is about complete streets, and this is really building on the, uh, the importance that we've heard put on transit and bicycles and walkability, and so that there would be key corridors in Fargo uh, that are designed with that in mind, and we're, those, those are what we're calling complete streets. It's a place where you're just as comfortable on a bicycle as you are in a car as you are walking. The signature complete street is a, another idea that we'd like that table to be thinking about. Uh, this isn't uh, a complete street, first of all, is a, is a great place to be. But a signature street is the street that you think of when you think of Fargo. So name a great city and you can think of its great street. What should that be in Fargo? One other idea that we're all very excited about is the uh, regional citywide trail loop that would be an all-season all uh, loop. You could be using it on bikes, on foot, on cross-country skis. The idea of a regional recreation destination, and that could be both uh, inside and outside. Uh, we, we've heard a lot of support and interest in creating a place that you can be uh, and be active all year round. And thinking about how you can really celebrate your connection to the river, enhance that, and create an amenity, a place where people uh, potentially gather for festivals or, or for a number of activities. And that table will be thinking about what those could be and where they can be. So I think we're right on schedule, and that's about all the talking that I'm going to do tonight. And the rest of it is going to be uh, you helping us understand what, where these things can be and how they can be accomplished and what's most important to you. The very first task for the night, though, is an individual task. Um, we'd like, there should be pins at every table. If you don't have a pin, let us know. Uh, spend about 90 seconds thinking about the one thing that you'd like this plan to accomplish. And then after that, you're going to share that and your name uh, with everyone at your table. Time starts now. Yeah, yeah. We should.